Hi, this is Dave Murphy, and in this video we're going to briefly cover how to manually create a split and review the elements of a split. Splits can also be created and managed through the API. Treatments are the versions of a feature that you show to the user, most commonly on or off. In other words, some users see the new feature and some don't. Treatments can be multivariate and descriptive. For example, instead of on and off, your treatments might be new, existing, and legacy. Users who are in the population of a rollout or experiment, but not specifically targeted, will get the default rule, shown here as 50% get the feature and 50% don't. Users who are not in the population of a rollout or experiment, say you are only including 10% of your overall users to start, will get the default treatment. Finally, the control treatment is a reserved treatment in split, and is the fail-safe if the SDK doesn't know what to do. For example, if an engineer puts a split in code before it's been defined in the console, or there's a problem with the SDK or network, the user will get control, preventing technical issues from disrupting your app. Another important feature is traffic type, which is the identifier with which you will target and measure features. They are completely customizable and can be set at any level of granularity of the population. While it can be any grouping, such as department, geography, store, or school, the default and most common traffic types are user and account. As an example, this is an illustration of traffic type for user versus account. If I were to target 50% of my user population to get the on treatment, and 50% getting off treatment, it would look like this. Commonly, more granular types such as user are for highly distributed populations or populations that may not roll up into logical groupings. When you target by account, while you may split the accounts 50-50, there may be, what, 10 times as many users getting on versus off. So why use that level of granularity? There are many reasons. For example, you're managing entitlements by account. Or perhaps you're a B2B company and want to make sure every user in each account has the same experience. For most of the training, we're going to be using a school example, since it's easy to relate to and we can look at some very distinct traffic types. When you create a split, you're going to do so in an environment. As a reminder, environments are typically things like dev, QA, staging, and production. And once that split is created, engineering instruments the code. You can see the supported languages on the left. On the right is a simplified, generic representation of the code to illustrate that at a base level, the code will call get treatment and then serve whatever is appropriate for each treatment. Let's create a split. We'll start by clicking on the Create Split button. You'll enter a name and we'll do, for example, registration for university. So we've got a new feature. You'll want to have a naming convention for your splits, uh, perhaps project, team, feature, or some other combination of things. And probably want to have a convention around using snake case or camel case or something like that. We'll go in and choose a traffic type. In this case, we'll choose students. The owners, uh, you can add owners at this point or just leave the owners to being administrators and Aristotle, which is the logged in user, famous teacher. We can also add tags at this point. So we'll add the uh, backend tags, since this is part of a backend system uh, for searching perhaps. And then we'll also add that this is going to be used for identifying classrooms. And then we could also add a description. Now that we've got the metadata for the split in place, we click on create and it creates a split for us. We're in the staging environment. There's nothing set up in terms of targeting rules yet. So the next thing we would do is add our rules. A couple things to point out. One is that the split name and the traffic type cannot be changed. So if something needs to be changed, whether the name or the traffic type, you'll need to create a new split. You can, however, change the owners. So I can just click on this and choose to add additional people who have ownership of the split, which depending on how your split is permission might give them additional rights or give them an opportunity to search based on ownership. Then there's also tags, which also could be changed. You can remove some tags. If it didn't make sense that this wasn't really a back end, we can remove that or we could potentially add another tag that 
uh, says that this is a search for universities only. We can also modify permissions, uh, which will uh, allow us to edit. Uh, right now, owners, administrators, and the person who built it can have the permissions to do it. But I can come in and actually even remove the person who built the uh, split as a person who can edit the split. Permissions are for editing or deleting a split. And once again, if I want to have people, specific people do it, I can choose who I want to be able to do that. Uh, if you want to find a specific split, you can look only for those that are owned by me or starred by me. Starred by me tells you ones that you're most interested in, and owned by me will tell you those that you either own directly or you are a member of a group that owns that split. And of course, you could search for splits as well. Right now, this particular split is doesn't have any um, targeting rules or whitelist, so it is dark. Once we save our changes, we can go in and select the syntax. Uh, and this is an easy way for the developer to go in, choose the language he wants, copy the code, make the changes, putting in the on and the off treatments and the control code, and then paste that into their environment. You can go to help.split.io where you'll find more information along with links to documentation and our community. Thanks.